So welcome back to another episode of Sip and Tyler Films. I know last night you were supposed to get a video about, uh, I think it's Ardarius, I forget his last name, from TCU. But um, some stuff happened and time got away from me and next thing you know, it was time for J. Cole's CD to drop, so I didn't do it. But that's why you're getting this uh, lunchtime schedule review video so I can try to stay consistent and stay in the in the YouTube loop, so to speak. But Flock, let's talk about the schedule for a minute. And you can see I've kind of written the schedule on the board. So um, we can kind of go through it. And I'm going to put games I think that we're going to absolutely win. And games that are in question, I'll put a question mark by. And so I'm not gonna give you a, a win-loss record. I'm basically gonna have a, a, a win floor on a, and a win ceiling. Cause it's really tough to see how all the, the moving parts are going to fit together with the new O-line, with the uh, new group of receivers, with the, um, the defense is fairly intact with a few additions, but it's, it's really hard to say without seeing anything. And today, I think they start rookie minicamp, so I can't wait to see whatever little highlights they decide to give us. Uh, I wish, you know, we could see more, but you know, you gotta have some kind of privacy going on. Uh, with the football team but without further ado let's get into the schedule and i appreciate you guys for being here uh like comment subscribe if you you know like the content if you want to see me uh keep winning and um let's get started so week one matter of fact let me get my little notes where i can see what's going on all right week one we got the raiders we kick off with the raiders on monday night football if i'm not mistaken where's my market So um, Raiders on really think they're going to present too big of a problem. So we're going to give a W there. So that's one W. Week two, Kansas City. They got a totally new O-line with uh, OBJ and some other guys. We basically got a totally new O-line with, um, with the exception of maybe Bozeman. If, the, if it pans out the way we think it's going to pan out, Bozeman would probably be the only – starter that we finished the year with because um you know um stanley was hurt and bozeman may be at center may be at center but um bozeman should be the only starter we have back on the o-line it's almost question mark that one because kansas city we we're owing what three or four versus them. we're owing three or four versus kansas city and you know i just i want us to win but i don't know i gotta put a question mark by that one Uh, week three, Detroit Lions. I think that's a dub. As I don't, they got <laughs> um, what's the Rams old quarterback? Uh, Golf is their QB. I don't really know what they got defensively. Uh, I just they got they got a weapon or two on offense. They got Swift. They got uh, Carry On. I I just don't see them beating us. I really don't. So that's the second dub. Week four, we go to Denver. Now, Denver is a, a tricky situation. Denver has everything that you need to be good but a quarterback. If they mess around and get A-Rod, I know that that situation is kind of fluid. If they mess around and get A-Rod, this could be a sticky situation. But we're going to assume they don't have him, and um, that's a dub for us too. So that's uh, three dubs. So right now we're looking at three dubs and a question mark with KC. Uh, week five. Oh, and all the circle games are the ones that are at home. They're home games. Uh, week five versus Indy. It's a tough game. Tough. Their defense is pretty darn good. But we're going to question mark that one too. Because I ain't going to just beat Homer and say we're going to win all these games. I'm going to be as realistic as possible. Uh, week six, L.A. Chargers. I really despise the L.A. Chargers. I really do. Uh, for reasons I ain't gonna go into it right now, but if you follow the channel, you kind of know why I don't like the Chargers. But um, W. All right, week seven, we have the Bengals at home. Um, Bengals have a lot of talent offensively. They do. Uh, Burrow will be back. They uh, added Chase to to what they had. They did lose AJ Green, but AJ Green hadn't been a a real factor in their offense in the past two years. He's been a factor against Baltimore, kicking our butt, but him, like, really producing hadn't been a factor for two years, so 
I don't think him leaving is going to be that big of a deal because they got some young receivers in there to, um, to I ain't going to say replace him because he's that good. You can't just say uh, a rookie's going to replace him, but they got guys that can, can go, especially picking up um, Chase to kind of reunite him with Burrow. But I don't think they're going to beat us at home. So that's another double for us. That puts us going into the bye week. One, two, three, four, five. Minimum five wins, I think. Minimum five wins. Could be seven, but minimum five wins. All right? Week nine. Coming off the bye week, week nine, we got Minnesota at home. Uh, Minnesota still has Kirk Cousins as their QB. So with that being said, I think a ton of pressure uh, and locking down Jefferson. Uh, Asian Adam Thielen should not be a problem. Um, who, who are their tight ends? They got uh, Irv. No, do they have Irv still? No, Irv. They may still have him. But again, and defensively, I don't think they can put up with you know with, with what we're going to do, especially by this time. By week nine, whatever kinks we have in these first – seven weeks as far as if we're trying to you know add the new receivers and run a, be a little bit more balanced it should be measured out and rolling by week nine so i think if we have if we don't have at least five wins right here by the time we get to minnesota they're gonna be in trouble like for real for real so let's go w week 10 in miami thursday i was gonna try to go to this game but i when i was writing this up i realized it was a thursday night game so that's out for me um, Miami's tough. Miami had 10, if not 11 wins last year, and they were the ones in front of us going down the stretch uh, to make a playoff run. And, you know, I predicted that they would fold. They did, and we got in. So, um, but Miami's tough. And we're playing in Miami. But the thing is, it's a lot of Ravens from Miami, and they're not going to have a home field advantage. I, it's not Lamar's from Pompano. Hollywood from from a Hollywood. Um, who else? Who else we got down there? We got some old Florida guys on the team. It's, but the fact that Lamar and Hollywood there, it's not going to be a home game for the for the Dolphins. Sorry. Um, week eleven, Chicago in Chicago. Anytime you go against um, Khalil Mack, it's a problem. Khalil Mack makes their entire defense better simply because of the pressure he can get. Now, if he's on the right side with um, – who we think going to be our right tackle? I forgot, just the top of my head. Oh, um, Villanueva. If he's on the right side, Villanueva can have problems. He can have problems. And if they keep him over there with Stanley, I would say they're stupid. <laughs> but, you know, he makes the defense better because you got to get rid of the ball. But can they stop us from running? That's the key. What, I don't know what they got on the interior, but it's going to be tough when you throw um, Ben Cleveland in there, you throw um, Bozeman in there, you throw uh, Ziegler, Ziegler, however you say his name, them guys in there. It's going to be tough to stop us up the middle. And you got to worry about Lamar, you know, keeping it. So my thing is if you can't block, Khalil Mack, read it. Wherever he go, read it. And, and, and do it like that. Do it. So now we're sitting at week 12 versus Cleveland at home. Ink Raven put out a video talk, saying, um, I think one of the questions was, did Cleveland have a better roster than Baltimore? And I think on paper, they do. On paper. But they're still Cleveland, and they don't have hearts, hearts like Ravens. So I think the home game, I think we're going to win. I think we're going to win. And you got to say, yeah, you've been a home with such and such and such, but our team is good right now. We just got a few kinks to... To, to knock out, to get us on one of them deep playoff runs. So I'm not being a home. I, I'm being as realistic as possible. Uh, week 13, Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Can y'all see that over there? Let me move this over a little bit. There we go. Week 13, Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. Um, again, being as realistic as possible, I'm going to put a question mark on this. Going into Pittsburgh, winning a rivalry game is tough. It's tough. It's really tough. Week 14. And, and this, this little stretch right here is tough. Week 12, Cleveland. Week 13, Pittsburgh. Week 14, Cleveland again. Week 15, Green Bay. And, and in between these Cleveland games, they got a bye week here. So even if we win this game, they got a whole week to, to review this game 
to watch this game and put a game plan together for, for us when we play them again. So they got a tremendous advantage right here. With that being said, I'm going to question Martell. Even if we lose these two games, I still think that should put us at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That'll put us at nine wins going into week 15. All right, week 15, we got Green Bay at home, and the fact that it's at home, this is going to be a shootout. I can almost put money on it. I can almost put money on it. So Darius is going to be fired up to play us again. Um, A-Rod's always, you know, tough to, to, to beat. Um, one of my favorite high school players is on Green Bay's team now. He was drafted in the seventh round, Kylan Hill. I don't know how much he'll play because they re-signed Aaron. Um, but they're gonna have they're gonna have a soft spot in my heart, but they're gonna lose right here. All right, they're gonna take this day. So we gonna get this up, get us back on the win streak. Week 16, Cincinnati. I gotta move my box. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, me. Um, week 16, Cincinnati. Move this over a little bit more so y'all can see. Um, I just don't think Cincinnati got enough to beat us yet, especially defensively. Offensively, they're gonna score points. They're gonna score points offensively, but they don't have enough to um, beat us. And I just see Baltimore just posted a, some kind of picture of rookie mini camp, so let me get to that. Doug right here. Week 17 versus the Rams, which is the game I have tickets for that I plan on attending. Um, Rams got Stafford. They got Cam Akers. They got um, probably one of the top defenses in the, the league. They're, they probably have the best defensive tackle or best defensive front guy. And they probably got the best cornerback. Where they're weak at is linebackers, I think. And I think we can take advantage of that. You know, basically running away from Aaron Donald and making sure we don't throw at um, Ramsey. So if we do that in the game plan, if they, if they can't stop the run, our little play-action pass game is going to take off versus them. And the last time we played them with those two guys on the team, I think um, we beat the dog crap out of them. And you know Marcus Peters is going to be fired up for that game. MP Juice Man gonna, gonna be, be turned. I'm gonna give us a good look. So that takes us into week 18, which is an extra week, because you know we have an extra game uh, with how many wins? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12. And depending on the everybody else's record, we may or may not play those guys. Y'all know how they go. So I'm gonna question mark that one. Because depending on the record and where we sit in the playoffs, we may or not play guys here. So, um, at minimum, 12 wins. Minimum. Minimum. Uh, comment down below what you think about my predictions, uh, whether you like them, whether you do not like them. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Uh, hit the like button for me. And, um, hey, I'll see you guys soon. I'm still planning on doing that Adarius video. Just don't know when. Then I'm going to get into some more stuff. And we're going to transition back into some concepts and stuff that the Ravens did good, the Ravens did bad and uh, situational football. So uh, this is Coach Edwards with Sip the Tally Films. I appreciate you guys, man. I'm out.